Hey guys, this is Candle and it's time for another gaming pickups video. It's been a little bit of a, a while since we've done this, a couple months. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and stay straight off the bat. I've played about half of these <laughs> and you'll, you'll see why in a minute. But we're going to start off with the game I mentioned last time that wasn't quite here yet. And that is Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Now this is a little bit of a story to get this because uh, I saw it on Amazon brand new for like 70 bucks. And I'm like, oh, that's not a bad price for that. You know, seeing its uh, market value was like 70, 80 bucks. I was like, that's not a bad price for that. So I went ahead and got it. Well, what happened was when it got shipped to me, I discovered that it was actually not a North American copy. Yeah, it had the uh, ESRB rating on it, but on the back here, it actually said it was uh, Malaysia and Singapore. Now, that's not necessarily an issue because it included the English text. Uh, I don't know about the English voice acting or not. It was still sealed, so I, I just send it straight back because I'm like, I wanted an, a North American copy. The only times I really want imports is when I can't, uh, when there is no physical version for uh, that game in North America, like the uh, uh, some of the Final Fantasy games on Switch and stuff like that. So I ended up going on to eBay and buying a used copy uh, for about, you know, 70, 80 bucks. I, actually, I think I got it for like 65. So because I was able to get all my money back from Amazon, I ended up actually saving a little bit of money getting it that way. One thing I did have to buy brand new on eBay, though, because I wasn't going to take the chance on uh, Amazon again, was uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. This is the Torna the Golden Country edition. So this does not include Xenoblade Chronicles 2. This is the uh, uh, expand alone. It was a, a DLC expansion that was also available as a physical purchase because it was kind of a separate thing. Uh, but this this version also included the season pass uh, content for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So definitely glad to have that in my collection now as well. I did end up opening this up just to make sure that I could use the uh, uh, the key in here to get the, the DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles 2 when I plan on playing that, which will probably be sometime this year. I want to play through Xenogears and Xenoblade Chronicles 1 first. Uh, but I would like to have them done before Xenoblade Chronicles 3 comes out later this year. Uh, regardless, though, I am definitely glad to have those two in my collection. And now the only uh, physical release, you know, not counting collector's editions and stuff like that, the only Xenoblade game I'm missing is Xenoblade Chronicles on the 3DS. Because I have Xenogears, I have Xenosaga 1 through 3, and then I have Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii and the Definitive Edition on the Switch, plus Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Torna, so. Oh, and I have Xenoblade Chronicles at X on uh, on the Wii U. So definitely glad to have those in my collection now. But beyond that, here, let me change the background here for a second, because that is my lighting. Uh, next background. Next background. There we go, that's the one. There we go, so that's more neutral lighting. lighting. Uh, beyond that, I did also get, and this one just came in yesterday. I haven't had a chance to even open it up yet. Uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. This is the standard edition, not the launch edition. I wanted to wait until I could get the standard edition because the launch edition includes that art book and the cardboard sleeve, which on the uh, Xbox and PS4, uh, PS5 is fine because it's the same size as one of those cases. On the Switch, however, I guess they decided they didn't want to have to reformat the art book uh, or just format it for a Switch or whatever. So... The uh, actual art book and uh, and uh, cardboard sleeve and everything end up making this like wider. <laughs> so I wanted the standard edition. This is the uh, remake of uh, Monkey Ball 1 and 2 uh, from the GameCube. So definitely glad to uh, play this at some point. But uh, I've got other stuff on my plate first. So I'll, I'll definitely give this a try sometime soon. Uh, one game that I have played a little bit of is Triangle Strategy. This is kind of a spiritual successor to uh, Final Fantasy Tactics and Tactics Ogre using the uh, HD 2D engine from Octopath Traveler. This is, in fact, I believe, from the same team as Octopath Traveler. And um, it's it's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it. However, I'm like three or four hours in, and I've only actually played through two scenarios, two actual combat scenarios. There's a lot of story for this. A lot of, of slow setup at the very beginning, so... Uh, like we, I haven't even gotten to the, the proper war yet. It's all still the early stuff, but definitely, definitely really enjoying this. So if you like uh, turn-based uh, tactical RPGs, uh, I would definitely uh, consider giving this one a try. Um, 
it's it's a bit different from Fire Emblem if you're if you're more familiar with that. For one thing, there is no permadeath in this, so you don't have to worry about trying to keep all of your units alive and stuff like that. So definitely give that a try if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, beyond that is another sealed game, which I probably won't open because I played it digitally originally, and that is the Medium. This is exclusive to Xbox Series systems and PS5. When it first came out, it was actually exclusive to Xbox and PC. And uh, this was the, the reason that I ended up getting uh, Game Pass. Because I'm like, well, it's on Game Pass, or at least it was then. And I really want to play it, and there's no physical version and uh, and stuff like that. So I went ahead and got Game Pass. Played it. I enjoyed it. It's it's not scary, I would say. It's got a couple moments, but beyond that, it's it's not scary. But it's still really enjoyable. I'm hoping they do a sequel at some point. Because the, the way this uh, ends, it, it kind of begs for a sequel. But yes, this game, you know, it's it's exclusive to Xbox Series X. You will not be able to play this on Xbox One or PS4. Um, there's also like a PS5 version as well. And the reason for that is because it takes advantage of the... Uh, uh, it takes advantage of the uh, solid state drive technology, which is the reason why I didn't play it on PC, because the only solid state drive I have in my PC is my boot drive, which is 256 megabytes, and I don't really have enough space to, to put many games on there. So I just put everything on an old school mechanical drive. So yeah, and and uh, so yeah, uh, I've got like four or five uh, Xbox Series X games now. So it might be worth uh, breaking them off from my Xbox One games at some point. And the reason why I haven't so far is because most of them are cross-gen and uh, they still say Xbox on the side, still pretty much the same branding and everything. But we'll 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 see what happens in the future if I get a couple more Xbox Series X games. Uh, it is again available on the Series S, but that's a digital only system. So, but yeah, definitely glad to have that in my collection. Uh, next couple games I have played. In fact, this one I actually beat uh, just last week, and that is Horizon Forbidden West. Yes, I paid the extra money to get the PS5 edition. Thing is, this had a free uh, upgrade, so if you bought the PS4 edition, either digital or physical, it was a free upgrade to PS5, and the PS4 version was uh, uh, 60 bucks, PS5 70. But the reason why I paid the extra money was because I wanted the uh, specific PS5 edition to go on my shelf. Eventually, I'll probably pick up the PS4 edition to go uh, right next to Horizon uh, Zero Dawn on my PS4 shelves, but for now. Definitely glad to have this on PS5. I really, really enjoyed this. Uh, I really enjoyed the story, too, and, and everything about that. Uh, although I didn't much care for the way it ended. Uh, you're spending most of the game searching for this one thing, and then you finally get it, and you have to let it go. <laughs> and that kind of sucks, but it's obvious uh, set up for either uh, more DLC down the road or uh, uh, another sequel or, or whatever. But definitely, definitely glad to, to play this and have it in my collection. Really enjoyed it. Uh, but I'm probably done with open world games for a little while. So, and this one, I was just playing the other day and putting a lot of time into it and really enjoying it. And that is Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. God, I have thoughts on this one. I don't normally go in for Souls-like games. Uh, I generally find them to be too difficult, especially the ones from, from software. Because, um, I don't much enjoy ramming my face into a brick wall over and over again and that's what a lot of these games feel like i need to get some water real quick mm. that's what these games uh often feel like to me is is like ramming uh my face into a brick wall over and over again this one i haven't really had that trouble yet i've had a couple bosses that gave me a little bit of trouble but i eventually powered through uh plus this has difficulty options so if i really really need to i can lower the difficulty and stuff like that but uh we'll see what happens um but as far as the story this is more than just a simple rehash of the story of final fantasy one like i thought it was gonna be this is like a complete reimagining even beyond uh the reimagining we got for final fantasy 7 through the remake and uh it, it like goes off the rails pretty quickly and i am loving every moment of it it is just absolutely amazing and uh, definitely, definitely glad to see where this goes. It feels like they're trying to create like an overarching mythos for the entire Final Fantasy series because uh, the Final Fantasy series in general, uh, every mainline entry is completely new, completely different world, different characters, might share some themes some similar elements like chocobos and airships and stuff like that. Uh, but beyond that, it's like completely new. Whereas this one introduces uh, the idea that 
uh, Final Fantasy itself is kind of this uh, extended multiverse because a lot of the areas you go to are inspired by and based off of dungeons and areas from core Final Fantasy games. Uh, for instance, the one of the first dungeons you go to is the Provoca uh, Sea Grot, which is this uh, uh, seaside cavern, which is based off of Sestasha from Final Fantasy XIV, the, that, like the, the first mainline dungeon in that game. And then one of the next places you go to is a forest that's based off of uh, um, the Sunleth Waterscape, I think it is, in Final Fantasy XIII. And you've got uh, a castle that's based off of Palamecia from Final Fantasy uh, II. You've got a tower that's based off of the Crystal Tower from Final Fantasy III and stuff like that. And it's it's really amazing. And there's all these little snippets of, oh, yeah, I, like uh, this guy uh, in the game left all these notes behind. And there's snippets of, oh, this this thing's from Dimension 2. And there's a, a despot there. And this area is based off of a key location that was uh, inspired by him and stuff like that. So I, I really love it. I can't wait to see where this goes and where it ends up. So definitely, definitely glad to have that. Uh, but keeping the Final Fantasy train rolling, this one I have not played yet, but I've been wanting it for a while. This is Final Fantasy XII Revenant Wings. This is the direct sequel to Final Fantasy XII. It's exclusive to the DS. I actually got this off of Amazon, brand new. Um, it was sealed. I opened it up because I wanted to make sure everything was in there. And it is. It's it's all in here. So uh, definitely, definitely make sure if you're buying stuff off Amazon, make sure you're buying like new. Make sure you're, you're uh, or at least you're aware if you're buying it used. And make sure like you're getting stuff the, the correct uh, regions and stuff like that. So definitely, definitely glad to have this in my collection. I am now only missing three Final Fantasy games on the uh, on the DS. I'm missing Final Fantasy uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Echoes of Time, which also had a Wii version. I don't have that yet either. Uh, Final Fantasy Fables Chocobo Tales, uh, and uh, Final Fantasy The Four Heroes of Light, which I believe was by the team that went on to do the Bravely games. I think it was uh, uh, the Bravely games that were a spiritual successor to that one, which was a spiritual successor to classic Final Fantasy, like uh, Final Fantasy 1 through 3 and stuff like that. So definitely, definitely glad to have this in my collection. This is actually even part of the, of the official Ivalice Alliance, which includes uh, Final Fantasy 12, Final Fantasy uh, 12 Revenant Wings, Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, War of the Lions, and uh, Final Fantasy Tactics A2 Grimoire of the Rift. It does not include Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, uh, the original release of Final Fantasy Tactics or Vagrant Story, However, uh, I kind of consider them that way. Oh yeah, it also doesn't include the Zodiac Age, but uh, I, I kind of include all of that. Like any game based in or around Ivalice, I kind of consider part of the Ivalice Alliance, except maybe uh, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, because that's not technically Ivalice, but it's neither here nor there. Um, still glad to have this in my collection. Beyond that, I got a collection of more Final Fantasy games. And uh, basically... I got Final Fantasy XI, Final Fantasy XI, Final Fantasy XI, and Final Fantasy XI. These are the standalone releases of the base game and all its expansions on PC. And, uh, oh man, I am definitely glad to have these. Uh, I did buy them all used off of eBay, so it's like, I know I'm not going to be able to use the, the keys in here, the codes in here. But that's fine, because when I'm finally ready to play it, I'll just buy it off of Steam anyways. And uh, Square will get my money that way. But definitely glad to have, you know, all of this in here and everything. And uh, there was one more expansion that got a physical release in North America. was uh, Seekers of Adelin. But that, I believe, only got a physical release on Xbox 360. Uh, so, other than the collector's ed uh, editions and the collections, like the Vanna Deal collection and stuff like that, Ultimate Collection... I now have like all the releases for Final Fantasy XI on PC, and I am glad because that means the only Final Fantasy PC releases I still care about uh, getting are the big box editions of Final Fantasy VII and VIII. Specifically for VII, I want the Trapezoid, the original Trapezoid release, not so much the uh, uh, Eidos Platinum Hits release uh, because I don't much care for that box design, but it's it would actually fit better on my shelves because it's a, it's a regular rectangle rather than that classic Eidos trapezoid. But uh, speaking of big box games, the last game I have to talk about is a big box game. And 
It's one I had as a kid. It's one I've done a Let's Play of. And it's one I've been wanting a physical big box release of uh, again for a long time. I actually had a big box release uh, when I was a kid, though not this specific version. This is Escape from Monkey Island. The, the big box release I had as a kid, I'm pretty sure, was the LucasArts Archive uh, Classics Collection, the Classics Archive Collection. And I'm pretty sure about that because it had the, the white border on the outside and the, the white on the spine and everything. Um, but definitely glad to have a physical copy of this again. And I really understand why. Like This came out like towards the tail end of the big box era. And I understand why they moved away from that because this is the game right here. You know, it's an, it's a two disc game and a simple jewel case. Look at how much wasted space because there's nothing in here. Like I double checked uh, online to make sure I was getting everything. There is nothing in this version beyond the the actual uh, jewel case. So there is there is a big box edition that includes a strategy guide. So that kind of takes up some of the space. But look. For... Yeah, you can hear that rattling around in there, all that extra space. So I definitely understand why they went more towards the small boxes like this because uh again if you compare the size of the jewel case you know it's just a little bit wider so what they do is you turn it sideways and see how much more space that that takes up you know how much less extra space there is for a jewel case plus the you know de still a decent amount of space if you need that extra uh you know a big manual and stuff like that and then eventually it transition to uh plastic clamshells double thick plastic clamshells like, uh, you know, like this one here is a double thick plastic clamshell and then eventually just standard DVD size cases. So anyways, that is everything for now. I did just get uh, another game off of eBay last night, but it's going to be a couple weeks before it gets here. So that'll be on the next one. Uh, but yeah, that's enough for now. So I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe.